Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. I know I haven't done a production tutorial video in ages, but this is one that I've wanted to make for a very long time. I think what always stopped me is that there are quite a few small things you have to cover first before you start looping the way you want, so let's start by answering a few questions. And please, bear with me, I'm going to cover a lot of small things, but I want to make sure you have all the knowledge you need to make some wicked music. So uh, let's begin. When it comes to using a looper, whether in real life or with software, two main ways that you might be using one would be for recording in composition, where you're actually working on a project and want to loop over a section of it and record different elements, or using a looper as part of a live performance, when you're jamming, putting on a show, or just recording grooves that you want to put into your music later. There are obviously other uses for a looper, and even these two scenarios have some overlap, but that's not important for now. In this video, we're going to be using a looper for live performance, just like I do in these jam videos. Step 1. Plug in our MIDI controller of choice. So for this video, I'm using the Akai MPD-218. You can see it right over here. You can also use an MPK Mini or pretty much any MIDI controller that you want that has buttons that can send MIDI signal. That's the most important part. So we've got our MIDI controller plugged in. Um, I'm just going to launch Ableton. Okay, so I've got a new project here. I'm just going to quickly remove some stuff that I don't need. So I'm going to get rid of these tracks. So I just want to make sure that my MIDI controller is being detected properly by live. So what I can do is I can go over here to live and click on preferences. I'm just going to drag this window one sec. So I go over to the link tempo MIDI tab that you have right here and I just check the MIDI section and I can make sure that I'm seeing the correct uh, MIDI controller pop up. So yes, I have the MPD-218 plugged in. This is good. And I can just check it over here in these areas as well. Uh, another way to check that my signals are being detected is, you see when I hit the pads, there's this small uh, light over here that starts flickering. So that's also a good way to tell that your MIDI controller is being detected. So that's good. My controller's plugged in and it's ready to go. For step two, decide what you want to loop. We'll keep it simple. Uh, in this video, we're just going to loop some drums. Okay, so I want to find some drums now. So to do that, I'm just going to open this left tab over here that we have. I'm going to go to the drum section and I'm going to find a kit that I like. So we have a 505 kit. I'm just going to go with this 808 kit because it's very simple. I'm just going to click, drag, and drop this right in here. Give it a sec. I want to be playing this kit using my MIDI controller, so I want to route. I want to make sure that my MIDI signal is being routed into here. You can see because I have this um, arm recording selected here, it's working. If I turn that off, you don't hear anything. So select arm recording. Um, even over here for the inserts, you can select the specific uh, MIDI controller that you want. So put my 218. And that's good to go. This is a very important step. Make sure your overall latency is less than or equal to 10 milliseconds or about as close as you can get to that. So it's important that we make our latency low so that every time I hit one of the pads, I want it to feel instantaneous. I want it to feel like I'm playing a real instrument. I don't want to touch a pad and then it's going to take an interval of like 20 or 30 milliseconds or something and then it's going to finish processing the sound and I'm going to hear it back. It's going to be like impossible to stay in sync and to maintain a rhythm. So to lower your latency, you can just go over to preferences, 
go to the audio tab, make sure you're in audio, and you're going to see your overall output latency right here. So you can see right now mine is 14 milliseconds. I want to get that a little bit lower. To do that, what you can do is you can go to this buffer size right here and you can bring it down. So there's a trade off here, and the trade off is you can, you know, your what you're doing by setting this buffer size to be lower is you're telling your computer that it's it you want it to process the sound and work much faster but it's gonna be able to only handle uh, a lesser load so you can't have as many live effects and virtual instruments and and chained effects and everything going um, otherwise you're gonna start you know the audio will start glitching out you'll hear artifacts and and this and that it'll be unusable uh, but if you're only using a few instruments like in our case we literally just want to use one uh, a smaller buffer size will be fine and it will uh, process the sound faster for us and we'll get this desired overall latency that we're looking for so um, that's just a quick rundown on that I have another video on that that you can check out that goes a little bit more into detail on um, understanding latency but yeah anyway so we're good now 256 samples overall latency is uh, 8.78 that's that's perfect for us you can see it too like it feels so nice and instantaneous whenever I press any of the uh, buttons on the pad step 4 create a new audio track just for the looper so we want a new audio track just for the looper and uh, we want to call this a loop track uh, we could create a new one here, so I mean, I could just right click and do insert audio track, but uh, we happen to already have one here, so I can just use this. I'm gonna rename this and call it the loop track. Do this. Loop track. Okay. Remember, the, the looper is just a, uh, an effects insert, it's just something that we can drag and put into the audio effects area. So I'm gonna go into the audio effects tab over here on the left. I'm going to look for a looper, which should be in the delay and loop category. I'm going to click it, drag and drop it right here, and it will be here. You can also just drag it just like this, but um, you know, just making sure that you understand it belongs to this loop track. The reason we're putting this on its own track is we want all of the audio that we want to loop to eventually be routed into this audio track so that it hits this looper, so that audio signal comes through the looper and we can use it. Send the output of your drums into the looper. What we want to do is have the output from our drum track route into our loop track. So to do that, just make sure we have the I.O. section enabled over here. If you press this button, you'll see uh, the audio 2 and what we want to do is we want to we what we want to tell this drum track is yeah route this audio to the loop track and so now sure we can't hear it so you're probably like oh what's going on well that's because we don't have monitoring on for this loop track but if we do i think if we do auto or in so now it, we're able to monitor the actual audio that's being routed in from this drum track into this loop track Step 6. Map a single button on your controller to the multi-purpose transport button. So what we want to do is I want one of the buttons on my MIDI controller, let's say this one right here. With, right now it's triggering the shaker. What I wanted to do is I want this to trigger this button right over here. So if you go to the loop track and you uh, look at the looper effects, look at this multi-purpose transport button. It's like a, It looks like a giant recording button. What I want is for every time I press this this button right here is to trigger that. So I need to do a MIDI mapping. To do a MIDI mapping, I'm going to press this button all the way on the top right over here. It says enables MIDI map mode. Now you can see there's these blue highlights and all these parameters and things that we can, uh, you know, connect our knobs and and whatever MIDI inputs that we want to. And I'm going to click on this multi-purpose transport button. Now I'm going to press this button. And you can see this mapping was created, node C2, loop track, etc. etc. What that means is every time I press this button on my MIDI controller, it is going to um, trigger this multi-purpose transport button. So if I disable MIDI map mode by um, clicking up here, and when I press this button, bam, there you see. It starts uh, doing the recording for our looping.
Also, just to note, if you accidentally hit your record button and you want to stop it or cancel it or undo, just uh, here, I can even show you if I click this and um, I wanted to stop, I just I can press this button again or I can do clear. I can do undo and clear a couple of times until clear is highlighted and then it will reset the looper for you. Step seven, trigger the loop as you play your instrument. Another thing to note is I don't want to worry about uh, the current track tempo we have, whatever it's set to. So instead of where, where it has this quantization setting, I'm actually going to change it to none, which means it won't be synced to our track tempo, it won't be quantized at all. And it is going to trigger literally whenever I play it. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to hit, let's say your first kick drum, at the same time as the multi-purpose uh, recording button to start the entire uh, loop sort of execution. Um, and I can just show you by demonstration. So I've got my kick drum right here. I'm going to keep it simple. I'll just do the kick drum. So there you go. It started the loop. I'm going to hit the stop button. I'm going to clear it. And I'm going to show you a couple more times how you can actually start uh, looping sort of via this demonstration. So let's see some of the other sounds that we have. At this point, there are some other settings as well with the looper that you should um, be mindful of. So one of them is uh, this right here, the tempo control and the song control. So you can s actually, based on the interval of your loop, it can automatically set your track tempo for you if you want to like go off of that. Um, you know, you can choose what you want to do with the song. Also here, this is really important. You can the, when when you when you see the plus sign that means and and when it's blue that means every time you press something it's being recorded on top of the loop that's already playing. Uh, so you can change this and you can have it. You know what? Don't do that immediately after I start the first loop. So as you can see now, let's say I just do a simple four on the floor. If I start pressing things, it's not going to record any of the other sounds now onto it and you can tell because it's it's yellow so when it's yellow remember it's not recording anything so now I can press this button again when I'm ready to start uh, the overdub process so let's do this oh wait let me try that again a little off beat but whatever it's okay then I can hit that play button again and it's going to not record anything over now. One thing should be noted, looping is not easy. It takes practice. You, It really does uh, take a long time to, I wouldn't say it takes a long time, but it just takes consistent practice to understand that how you can quickly sort of build on top of a beat. So it's okay if you make mistakes. You, you got to practice. It's not going to sound really, really good immediately. Uh, but it is super rewarding when you uh, when you get it, and you can make some really awesome uh, sounds out of it. Another really fun thing with the looper is this speed tab. So um, yeah, before wrapping up this tutorial, I guess I'll show you the I'll I'll show some of these uh, other things that you can do as well. So let's clear this up. Let's pause this. Let's uh, create a quick beat. All right, so now what I'm going to do is uh, I'll add a couple more elements to it.
All right, not the most fun beat, but this part is what gets really fun. You see this speed tab here? You can drag it down. Yeah, now you got this really awesome vibe. Let me add some reverb. Ooh. Another thing too is this drag me button that you have here. Uh, let's create another audio track. Go to the uh, go to the loop track and just drag over there and bam, check it out. This is what we just um, worked on. What we just created. Yeah, mute all of this. It's our beat. I think you could probably quantize this as well. Um, let's see. Yeah, check it out. We quantize it. Let's hear it. <laughs> Sounds a little goofy, but anyways, basically, there's there's a lot of ways you can uh, mess around with the looper after you record the loop. And finally, step eight: practice, experiment, and create your own techniques. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, definitely practice a bunch, have fun. Quick recap: you know, make sure your MIDI controller is plugged in. Um, make sure in your preferences that your latency is nice and low, that you, uh, you have all, uh, you know, it's, it's easier to just have a separate loop track. You don't, it, again, it's, it's an FX insert you can put into any, any audio track or VST or whatever, uh, anywhere you can add audio effects, but having it's having a dedicated loop track is good to route, um, other instruments in, um, decide what you want to loop. That's always good. And once you have that in, mess around. Honestly, like there, there's so many cool things here for you to mess around. Looper is one of the most fun uh, things to uh, mess with in Ableton, which allows you to experiment, create new grooves. It's great song inspiration when you're, you know, having a facing a musical block. It's actually very fun to just come in here, hook up some instruments, and mess around. Uh, but that's it. I hope that tutorial helped, and um, I'll try to post some more videos going in depth or or just showing some additional techniques on how you can utilize a looper but that's it for now thank you so much for watching be sure to like and subscribe um to the channel and guys i'm on twitch now i actually stream decently often i think at least once a week or multiple times a week sometimes depending on how i'm feeling uh, i've been having a lot of fun using cubase and getting back into music production returning to my roots uh, doing a lot of drum and bass, progressive break beats, etc. But I'd love to also do more Ableton live performance videos and uh, show more techniques. But definitely give me a follow on Twitch, uh, show some love, and come hang out. And uh, so, you know, follow on Twitch so you can get notified next time I stream. But yeah, thanks for watching. Cheers.